Let's say you're driving, and in a split second, you foresee you're going to be in a collision, and there's no way around it. Given a choice, would you prefer to hit a car that's more like a large moving cardboard box, or a swinging wrecking ball? It's a no-brainer that most people would pick the lighter vehicle. That's because it has less mass, so you'll suffer less impact and injury. But here's the thing, no driver ever wants to be in a car crash. So what will happen in the years to come as we see more electric cars on the road? EVs are significantly heavier than traditional combustion engine cars. This means car crashes can get deadlier, but no one is talking about this, so I will. Today, I'll expose the real risks of heavy EVs and what happens when a massive four-ton electric truck hits your combustion engine car. It's not just about weight. EVs can accelerate faster than traditional cars because they have more torque. If you combine these two aspects alone, you can see why EVs can be deadlier on the road. Electric trucks are the big rage now. Exactly. How much more dangerous are they when compared to combustion engine trucks? Here's something most people don't know. EV trucks aren't just heavier than combustion engine trucks, but in fact, the average EV truck can be anywhere from 20, 30, or even 50 percent heavier. Take the 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning, for example. It weighs 6,500 pounds. To be clear, it's 35% heavier than the gas-powered model. Or look at the 2022 GMC Hummer EV. That beast weighs 9,063 pounds. That's more than four and a half tons. The battery alone is almost 3,000 pounds, which is a third of its total weight. Needless to say, this is GM's heaviest vehicle to date. Compare that to the last Hummer 3, which weighed a tad over 5,000 pounds. Being in a car crash is bad enough as it is. But now, imagine getting hit by a truck. That's four and a half tons. Basically, it's like getting hit by an elephant. The thing is, Americans love trucks. As the combustion engine ban approaches, we can only expect to see more electric trucks on the roads. And that's the very problem. If you haven't already been in a car crash, chances are you know somebody who has. Did you know there are five main types of car collisions? So which ones are the most fatal? Well, most people are familiar with rear-end collisions. Injuries are usually more serious for passengers in a car that gets rear-ended as opposed to passengers in the car behind. Then there's side impact collisions. This is also called a T-bone collision because when a car directly hits your side from a right angle, it forms the shape of a T. Then we got side swipes. This collision happens when the adjacent side of two vehicles touch or swipe each other while one or both cars are moving. The damage is usually just cosmetic and not as fatal. Then there's head-on collisions when two cars ram into each other head-on, usually at high speed. This can be extremely fatal. And of course, there's the multiple vehicle pileup. This collision involves many vehicles and usually happens on a highway. Imagine your car getting hit multiple times from multiple directions. Cars can even spin during this type of collision, causing even more injury to the passengers on board. And passengers who decide to leave their cars can still be hit by oncoming vehicles. Of all the various types of collisions, the side impact is the deadliest. In contrast, head-on collisions can be very serious, but it's usually less fatal than side impact collisions. That's why side impact collisions make up a whopping 21% of all automobile related fatalities. That's almost a quarter. Intersections, parking lots, and on highways or other high traffic roads are where side impact crashes most often occur. Other injuries that can occur in this collision are whiplash and concussions. More severe injuries include spinal cord injuries and broken bones that disrupt blood flow to crucial organs like lungs, intestines, kidneys, and the spleen. Because of the severity of this type of collision, consumer groups have been applying pressure on car manufacturers for better solutions. In fact, that's why we see more and more car and truck manufacturers installing side airbags. Now more than ever before, but not all do it. So I'll take my advice on this. Always consider the safety features offered by any car model before you purchase a vehicle. It literally could save your life. One of the most leading causes of car crashes is when a driver is using his phone. One out of every four car accidents in the U.S. is caused by texting while driving. Did you know that texting while driving is six times more likely to get you in an accident than driving drunk? That's literally how serious it is. The next time you're on the road, just watch the drivers around you. It's incredibly sad how many still text despite these statistics. If you're one of these drivers who texts, please put the phone down. Believe me, the text message can wait. It's not worth risking your life or the lives of others. Every year, smartphone users while driving lead to 1.6 million crashes, 390,000 injuries. On average, answering a test takes your attention away from the road for about five seconds. If you're traveling to 55 miles an hour, that's enough time for your car to travel the length of a football field. And now let's look at another factor that impacts the severity of a crash, and that's the weight of a vehicle. The less mass a car has to move, the better it handles. Here's the physics behind it. A vehicle's kinetic energy is equal to half its mass multiplied by the square of its speed. Basically, kinetic energy 
energy relates to how fast your car is traveling when it's in motion. The heavier your car, the higher its kinetic energy, and the harder it is to get it to slow down. Powerful engines and smart dampers are useful for starting and swerving, but you can't ignore a car's mass when it's time to slow down or stop. Heavy cars need bigger brakes and longer braking distances. For every 450 kilograms that gets added to a car, it becomes 40% more likely to turn into an otherwise survivable crash into a fatal collision. In 2020 alone, more than 4,000 people died in large truck crashes. 15% of these deaths were passengers inside the trucks. But get this, 68% were passengers inside other passenger vehicles, and 16% were pedestrians, motorcyclists, or bicyclists. We all know that the 2035 combustion engine ban is fast approaching. So what will happen is more EV trucks at our roads? Will we see more fatal crashes? My personal guess is sadly yes, for all the reasons I just mentioned. Because of this, car manufacturers need to continue working on EV safety features to prevent the number of fatalities from rising as more EVs hit the road. One such major feature that needs an update is the crumple zone, also known as the crush zone. Crumple zones are areas of a vehicle that are designed to deform and crumple in the event of a collision. Its purpose is to absorb some of the energy of the impact and protect the passengers. But remember, heavy EVs have a lot of kinetic energy. More advanced designs require careful engineering of these zones to absorb as much kinetic energy as possible. This can be done by using a variety of metals and other materials in their construction. This would address the impact of the passengers inside the EV truck. But here's something no one talks about. What about your average combustion engine sedan on the road? What happens when the heavy EV truck hits that? Are car makers of combustion engine cars adapting their crumple zones to account for heavier EVs? So far, I haven't heard anything about this, but I sure hope someone addresses it soon. In my opinion, it's likely that crash test ratings will also have to be recalibrated to account for EVs. When it comes to crash test ratings, more stars mean safer cars. The five star safety ratings program basically evaluates how vehicles perform in crash tests. They are conducted by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Insurance Institute for Safety Highway. They conduct these tests with frontal, side, and rollover crashes. These test ratings are regularly recalibrated, and when it happens, the auto industry as a whole gets affected. For example, in 2016, they added automatic emergency braking systems to the list of recommended technologies for prevention of high speed and rear end crashes. By 2022, automakers had committed to making this a standard in all vehicles. But now let's talk about automated driving systems, also known as automated vehicles. Did you know that there are six levels of autonomous driving? Right now, no car is rated higher than level two, so let's break down these levels. Level zero is for manually controlled vehicles. Basically, I'm talking about technology like emergency braking systems. Criteria is only that the humans operate the system. Level one is the lowest level of automation. Think of things like cruise control. While cruise control does keep your car at a constant speed, you still need a human driver to monitor the steering and braking, for example. Level two is for partial driving automation. This means advanced driving systems control both the steering, the accelerating, and decelerating. For example, Tesla Autopilot and GM's Cadillac Super Cruise systems both qualify as level two. Level three is for conditional driving automation. These vehicles have environmental detection capabilities, but they still require a human driver to remain alert and ready if they ever need to take control of the vehicle. Level four is for high driving automation. In most circumstances, these cars would not require human interaction, but drivers would have the option to manually override. Level four vehicles can operate in self-driving mode and are geared toward ride shares like Lyft or Uber, except taken up a few notches. And finally, level five is for vehicles with full driving automation. These vehicles will not require human attention. That's why these vehicles won't even need steering wheels, accelerators, or braking pedals. Most people have heard about Tesla's autopilot feature, but actually, this feature is not as wonderful as you might think. Automated driving systems aren't a cure-all. Several weeks ago in May, a U.S. federal agency started investigating a crash involving the 2022 Tesla Model S that ended up killing three people. The thing is, this Tesla may have been operating in autopilot at the time of collision. The accident occurred in Newport Beach, California. One minute, the Tesla was driving on autopilot, but then out of nowhere, the Tesla hit a curb and slammed into construction equipment. The car was completely totaled. Crazily enough, this is one of over 30 crashes being investigated by NHTSA, and all of these crashes potentially involved autopilot. Autopilot has been ruled out in only three of the 35 special crash investigations into Tesla since 2016. In all these investigations, a total of 14 crash deaths were reported. You're probably thinking that autopilot is sounding less and less safe by the minute. So what started all these NHTSA special crash investigations of systems like autopilot? Well, it all began back in 2016. That was after a fatal accident in Florida. This accident involved another Tesla Model S that also had autopilot activated. Tesla's official website says that current autopilot features require active driver supervision and that autopilot doesn't make the vehicle autonomous. But the company's branding has been accused of misleading drivers when 
when it comes to their vehicle's capabilities. Just think about the name Autopilot itself, or how they brand it as full self-driving software. Tesla's technology is nowhere near level 6 in full autonomy or full self-driving, yet its naming, marketing, and branding conveys that. And that's what's giving drivers a false sense of security. But is it possible for driver's assistance features to help reduce crashes? Here are three specific safety features in 2022 vehicles that claim to do just that. Lane departure. Keep the vehicle centered in a marked lane. This is generally on highways. If your hands are off the wheel, the system will warn and disengage. Adaptive cruise control accelerates and brakes to maintain a good distance from the car ahead. It can even break down to a complete stop. And finally, there's automatic emergency braking systems, which, as the name suggests, automatically brakes your car in the event of an imminent collision. More than 12 major automakers equip nearly all their 2021 vehicles with these systems, but only 58% of GM vehicles sold in 2021 had automatic braking. This is expected to change this year. But now, you tell me, do you think the severity of crashes will increase as we see more EVs on the road? Please share by commenting below. If you liked the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.